it's our bit the down video part 10 and this time it's how to homebrew your elderflower champagne all the ingredients and the stencils are in the text in comments or somewhere below in the video as well as some info if you need alternatives and also disclaimer but it's not really champagne after all okay let's do it okay so what we need is some elderflower flowers so the thing is to actually get those quite early in the morning because if you get them in the evening uh, they smell a bit more rancid and whatever that you brew with them is actually uh, doesn't taste very good so this is what elder flowers look like uh, they're quite in bloom at the moment so I'm very lucky here to have uh, a neighbor who's got these in and who has allowed me to actually pinch a few uh, kind of flowers you don't need that many but you need enough to actually brew so if you have about 10 10 sprigs like this uh, that should be enough okay so that's the first step okay so well now we're back home and that's the elder flowers and uh, we got about something like 100 grams or something like that that should do I'm going to break these talks later because you don't need them really, you need the flowers. They need to be white or cream. If any are like completely yellow, it's quite worth removing them because they're too yeasty and the champagne might taste a bit weird. So that's the first stage of preparation. The next one is you need to convert lemons, three small lemons or two big lemons to lemon juice and rind. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so that's the juice of three small lemons, or two big ones. That's the rind of one and a little bit. And what we have here is 100 grams of elderflowers. Okay, one thing to remember is not to wash them. And I'm going to break away these stalks in a bit. Okay, so that's what you need to start with. Okay, so next uh, <coughs> is a big pan. And what you need is a whole pot of honey or you can do like about a kilo of sugar but honey is way better like the whole thing 450 something grams whole thing make sure you get all of it uh, I put hot water in there and tip the rest usually so but I will do that on the video and then what you need is uh, two pints two pints of Water. Boiling, boiling, it has to be boiling completely. Okay. Now, once that's done, make sure it's completely cleared up. There's no sticky honey at the bottom. Okay, that looks all right. Some in the sides. <coughs> okay, so then what you do is add cold water, six pints of it. because it sometimes stops. Uh, it's alright. And the last two parts. Okay, that's fine. So, see there's just about the right height. So that's why you need a very quite thick pan there. And what you do next is all the lemon juice. Give it a stir, make sure it goes through. Oh, got a seed there, well, oh, never mind. And then add all the flowers. So I'm going to skip the one with a very large stalk because I'm not 
break them up separately, all the others go in low. So there we go. Okay. I tend to put them there facing down like this. There's a yeast on the flowers that you need to actually be in contact. The stalks are secondary. Okay. That's okay. Oh, that looks all right. I'll sneak those later. So what you need now is basically you cover them. You need a clean dish towel. It needs to cover the whole pan. Make sure it's covered completely. Nudge to the side. It's quite a bit to tie something, and then make sure it doesn't get taken on. And that's got to stay like that. Uh, well, I did it two nights really, uh, but you need to stir it. So I'm going to stop this video here and start again in two days. Okay, so I've just removed all the thick stalks, you can see, and I've taken the rind, added it to the rest of the honey at the bottom of the pot, just add a tiny bit of hot water in there. It's a way to make sure all the honey gets out, but you also mix the rind, cover it up, give it a wee shake just to make sure we get all the honey. Get taste from the rind as well, you can see, and then just pour it on top. And that's it. Okay, so that's it for 48 hours. Make sure to keep it covered and uh, that no one tries to have anything to do with it for a while. Okay, next step. So, after a couple of days, or uh, about four days if you used uh, honey like I have. Uh, what you should have is uh, a way much more cloudy, a lot more cloudy. And you can see, there you go. That means for fermenting, it is fermenting, and that's what you need. Um, so what I've done uh, the past four days is like every, about twice a day. I just give it a stir to make sure. It's all mixed and actually ferments evenly everywhere. And now this is really ready to go. I'll show you again. It's a bit cloudy. And you can see it here. Yeah. So if it's clear, it means it hasn't started yet fermenting. Uh, you can accelerate it. You can, you can get champagne yeast or wine yeast. That's perfect if you do. Or you can just put a few grains of uh, just just baking yeast, just but only a few grains because if you do more, it will really damage it. Okay, so the next stage is uh, you got to sieve all this. I don't know if I can film it at the same time, but I'll, I'll explain what it looks like. So uh, it was hard to actually try and film and do this at the same time, so I just done it. Um, yeah, so I've sieved all of this through a thin sieve into another bowl, and you can see it's completely clear. You don't want any bits. There's a few struggling bits, that's not a problem, but basically you want to just make sure you pass it through a thin sieve. And then the next stage is to bottom it. So uh, just your uh, plastic, ideally, classic uh, fizzy uh, water or fizzy like juice bottle kind of thing. Funnel, and just fill it up. And then you fill it up to around here. You want a lot of space at the top. Uh, because there's going to be uh, obviously uh, it's going to ferment and it's going to become carbonated and fizzy so you want uh, air to build up here so uh, I can't film that either but I'm just going to tip this and just fill it up to around here and then that's your first bottle so there should be just enough for two bottles and slightly over as you can see and uh, then that's it really and you just put it away for about two or three weeks so I'm just going to do that now well, okay, so I had to do that again without filming because it takes, it takes two hands at least. Uh, I did, I did it someone else, right? Okay, so um, I transferred everything in the bottle, so as you can see, there's nothing left. So that's four liters. I left some space at the top, so that uh, when the pressure builds up, it'll be fine. Something to notice already: if everything is working okay, you should see some bubbles starting to form. I don't know if it's okay. There you go. So uh, you see some bubbles starting to form on the side of the bottle. That's a very good sign. It means that it 
uh, is going to become quite fizzy. So yeah, so that's really good. Uh, so that's it really, you're going to have to just leave it minimum two weeks really, but ideally around a month. Uh, every day or so, just, just use your sense, when you see the, the pressure really building up, the bottle might start to bulge or something, leave some air out, uh, just a little bit, just unscrew it, leave some air out of the back, don't, don't unscrew it completely because it will just explode. Um, the other thing also is, uh, a lot of people forget to do this, it's really important, uh, you have to make sure the bottles are completely sterile uh, before using them. So. The easiest way of doing that is you, you, you buy two bottles of flat water, uh, like spring water or something, and, uh, and you just drink it and seal it and, uh, and it basically just fill from uh, your mixture straight into it afterwards, you don't put anything else in. If there were bottles of like uh, lemonade or anything like that, then you completely have to rinse it with hot water several times and to make sure the inside is completely clean. A lot of people forget that because uh, we do everything right, but then at the end, if you don't clean these bottles, it would completely change the taste. So anyway, hope you enjoyed that and hope yours, your brews for Helder Flower Champagne work out well. There we go, oh, I see Amish, okay. <laughs>